Stan, what's up? Hey, man. Hey, good to see you, man. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Can't wait to check him out. No doubt. We went to record Tristan Justice in 2002 and back to Oblivion Studios, and that was like the last three unrecorded Morbius songs that we had from when Morbius collapsed. Tristan Justice was just me and Matt because Jason was gone. Jason quit the band right before uh, we were going to go into the studio. He just kind of stopped showing up. Uh, and we had a second guitarist uh, named uh, Kevin Fitch. Kevin's a nice guy, but uh, kind of struggled with some of the Tristan Justice songs. It still sounded like Morbius. The, the biggest difference was uh, Andy doing vocals. It was, it was a good sound. It just it was different from what Morbius had sounded like since the Realm days with Jason's vocals. He really gave us a, a great opportunity to put out some music that we thought would never come out. I mean, we recorded Tristan Justice in 2002, and it got released in 2013. I decided to put it out because it was, I thought it was a, it was a something good for me, as being a fan from years back, to reissue something that I was familiar with, and something that had never been released before. Everything just kind of exploded after that. We started, all their old albums got re-released. Ted from Dark Symphonies put everything out on vinyl too, so we have more Morbius releases after we stopped playing as a band than we ever had while we were playing as a band, which is, is pretty strange. You can sell the music. You can sell the music every single day, but actually working with the bands, talking to them, actually interacting, it's something I always wanted to do when I was in the scene years ago but uh, I just wasn't able to do it, but now I am. It was really because of Stan and, and Lost Apparitions Records, um, you know, which is the whole reason we started playing again, and why, why Mike's in the band. This is Mike Bozer. This guy, motherfucker right here, made this happen. He's a, from Oblivion and Spine. He's got a studio, Oblivion Studios up in Maryland. We recorded Sojourn to the Septiac with this guy, so he knows what we're all about. I'm really glad we got Mike Bozier to play Morbius. I couldn't think of a better second guitar player than Mike. I mean, he's one that I always had looked up to as a guitar player since the first time I ever saw him at DC Space in like 1992. Being a part of Morbius was really, really awesome because it goes back to my four track recorder. They were the first band that actually paid me to to record a piece for them for, it was an intro and outro thing for, for a CD they put out. It meant a lot, you know what I mean? Because that was like the start of Oblivion Studios, basically. I wish he had played second guitar when B left and we had got him back then, because who knows where we would have gone. I haven't played standard tuning in, uh, up to that point in like 16, 17 years. It was weird, it was like playing guitar again for the first time. Um, so it was a challenge, you know, playing those those kind of chords again and everything like that. It's always harder to play someone else's music because you didn't write it, you know what I mean? And, it, and it's, I don't write the same way, so it was a, a really big challenge to learn it and to, um, like the counts were, were, were weird. It's like one riff would, it wouldn't end on, a, on like a four, four pattern. It would, it would, the riff would end, but then it would end halfway into the next riff. It was hard to explain, but I guess you would, you would know it if you're high on PCP or something, you know, but uh, unfortunately I wasn't, and so it was really, really odd to do, you know. Him being interested in playing in Morbius was great, but it's even better as he wanted to contribute music. I mean, he wrote Infernal Imprint, and it's a, it sounds like a Morbius song. It was easy to write, you know, for Morbius as well. It came real natural. We recorded two new songs that we were gonna use for the re-release of Sojourns to tack on as bonus tracks. Um, one of them is an all new song called Infernal Imprint that Mike Bozier wrote. We got a tempo, you know, that everyone agreed on, and then, um, of course, when we laid the tempo down in the studio, Matt was telling me, it's too fucking fast. We, there's no way we had it that tempo. Fuck! I couldn't get the speed up. I couldn't stay on speed. Uh, it's the first time I ever tried using a click track, uh, which is uh, this loud, annoying cowbell that kept the time. Take number 800. It was an eye-opener. It was also interesting being back in the studio. I love being in the studio, but that session was very frustrating. It took, it took a lot of patience to be able to get through the, those songs. So I, I did all the guitars first to a click track, 
and then um, did match drums, and then um, uh, Andy came into guitars, and Jason did bass, and then uh, we did the vocal tracks. And it was fun, man. It was fun doing it because we you're hanging out with your best friends too. You know what I mean? Doing during the process, so yeah, it doesn't get any better than that. You know. He was mixing it and then arranging it in between the times we were in there laying down tracks. <laughs> very difficult for me to play um, because I uh, lost sensation in my right hand. It was hard to hold a pick. So it was a struggle to get up to speed to be able to play, but we did it. Mm -hmm. 